In this video I get lost again, I get scared again, I get stung by nettles again, and we meet a curious man fishing underneath a motorway. This is the Gunai GN29, a mountain bike style e-bike and is a bike that can get you over 30 miles per hour for a ridiculously low price. It also has an amazing range from its massive battery. How can it give such performance at such a low price? There must be something wrong with it. Well, let's find out. Right, welcome to the EVRC. And I am on the Gunai GN29, which is a 29 inch, that's the wheel size, E mountain bike, mountain bike style. The mountain bikers would get upset if I call it a mountain bike, but it's got a mountain bike style frame and it's got a 750 watt 48 volt motor. And it's really bloody fast as you're about to see. Before we do some top speed runs and take a bike along some mountain bikey type paths, let's do the unboxing because the brands that send these things always want me to, and about four people really love them for the ASMR. It was well packed. Ugh. Ta-da! It's built. It comes with a manual that has instructions for loads of bikes, but curiously not this one. A free gift that I didn't open in case it was a trap. A quick release wheel thing, pedals, a pump, nice touch. A two amp charger that charges the massive 15 amp battery in about six to seven hours. Sadly, there's no UK plug and no adapter. By the way, if you need a good adapter, I'd recommend one of these travel adapters for foreign visitors from Sainsbury's. They're about 3 99 and are loads more secure than some of the little crap ones you get with bikes without UK plugs. And finally, you get a little toolkit in a bag. Back to the bike. I'm on zero assist right now. And to be honest, it feels like riding a normal bike. Uh, of course, this has got 21 gears, which is unusual for an e-bike. And I'm currently in gear seven, which means the, the middle ring on the, uh, on the crank is on the, the smallest one. So it's the easiest one. I'm going to use the left hand one to push it onto the middle one. And unlike the right gear lever, the left one's not quite as precise in that you don't go up one, up one. You have to kind of move it a certain distance until it gets onto the right ring. So now I'm in the middle ring and this gear is at the back. I'm on seven. So I suppose technically I'm in gear 14 now. So I'm in assist level one and this does have a throttle, so I'm going to use the throttle and I'm going 10.4 miles an hour. I'm going to up it to assist level 2 and it does it instantaneously. And I'm now going 15.7, 15.8. I'm going to up to 3. Assist level 3 takes us to about 20. It's going slightly downhill, so I'm going to go into 4 now. And speed level four is about 23 miles an hour. So now I'm gonna bring out the big boy, speed level five, and that is 25. So I'm not helping, 26. 27, 28. 28.5 so it looks like throttle only speed setting 5 takes you to about 28 miles an hour which is about 45 kilometers per hour let's see this uh, pedal assist pedal what assist do doesn't come in straight away which is probably a good thing if you've got a throttle anyway so if I pedal assist now one two three there about three seconds Sadly, there was no room on the handlebars to put my phone with the GPS speedometer, but I did have it out for a while riding one-handed, and the bike speedo did seem pretty accurate. I'm gonna try and take it onto the biggest chain ring, because at the moment, it is acting like, I'd say the middle chain ring is very similar to a normal e-bike, so it's like I'm in normal gear seven. So the question is, with 21 gears, what are they all for? Will we be able to help the bike more with the high gears, or will we be able to climb a hill better with the low gears? Let's not waste any time and get on with a speed test. 29. 30. 
31, 32, 33, run out of road. It's not bad. Whew. Not bad at all. Not only does the GN29 get up to a very fast top speed for a 750 watt 48 volt e-bike, it also has some good torque at 50 newton meters. You definitely feel thrusted forward when you hit the throttle unlike some other bikes that are more powerful on paper. And it's a welcome skill when you find yourself on a hill with traffic lights. So I'm going to use the throttle to help me get away and human power of course. The rattling, by the way, is from the camera mount, not the bike itself. In general use, I would recommend you stick to the largest chainring, in effect using gears 15 to 21. Those gears give the impression of a really well-geared e-bike, where the rider can easily propel the bike higher than the top speed of the motor. This is a fast bike, this is. I've got a lot of 750 watt bikes. They don't feel as fast as this one, bloody hell. And I like that, in the top gear, You can 100% help, but considering it's only 750, I know what they're doing. It must peak a lot higher than 750, and they're just being very modest, as Ron would say in the movies, but not the books. This feels fast. Bloody hell. Now, I've talked about bikes being mechanically quick in the past where for example it's been a 250 watt hub motorbike so not the fastest bike but the actual bike itself the gears and everything working together actually makes you able to go quite fast on the bike and then there's other bikes where they've got big motors and you can go fast on them but you always feel like the motor is actually working against the bike itself this is one of the rare examples it seems where the bike and the motor is actually working together to make one really fast bike. Dropping the middle chain ring down to the smallest cog, so gears one to seven, the bike becomes insanely easy to pedal and pretty much becomes unusable on flat ground. But if you ever find yourself on a hill steep enough to make the motor struggle, you'll be able to use these gears to power yourself up that hill and give the motor a little bit of human help. Someone said in the comments recently, get yourself a normal bike, lose some fat. And to be fair, I'm not going to be losing fat on this bike, but you can if you want to. <laughs> what? I'm not even trying, I'm going 29. But will all this speed translate to a fast sandy lane hill climb? Can it beat the current fastest consumer e-bike that's been up the hill, the DYU King 750? Or maybe even get close to the WOW Cyber or the current king of the hill, the X-Way Flex Pro Electric Skateboard? Let's find out. Three, two, one, go. That throttle definitely seems quite instant. Some throttles take a while to get going. But, here we are, 16 miles an hour, 17 miles an hour. Bit of momentum is going to take it up. This is a hill climb test, but it starts off as a bit of a speed test. Ooh, is that a dead animal? Past the fat tree. Easily past the grip box. It's going quite well. Just feel pretty strong. Oh, slowing down now, though. That, that rattling is annoying. I do apologise. I'll hold that. 12 miles an hour. 11. 11.2, 11. Oh, more grass. Oh, God, look out for glass. Luckily, the, the, the tyres, 2.1 inch wide, 29 inch diameter, which is why it's called the GN29. Uh, got a lot of rubber on them, so the glass shouldn't go all the way through. Right, we're about to finish, though. We're about to finish. It feels strong, so it's made it up, so that's good. And no. And with a time of 1 minute and 0.42 seconds, the GN29 finds itself in a very respectable 5th place on the leaderboard, ever so slightly behind the DYU King 750, and faster than the 1000 watt plus Meepo V4S electric skateboard. By the way, if you haven't seen our first place vehicle, the X-Wave Flex Pro, you should really check out the video. The speed of it up that hill is just something else. If the speed and hill climb tests have sold you on the bike, there are links to the bike in the description below they are affiliate links meaning it does help out the channel if you use them but at no extra expense for yourself but there are more tests 
to come, so hold on to your money until you've seen them. So we've established that the bike can do hills and that it's really fast, but how are the brakes going to cope? At such a cheap price, the bike has to save money somewhere. One of those places is usually the brakes, and indeed this bike has mechanical brakes, not hydraulic. So let's see how they do. Right, so you can see the skid mark. I might, you know what, I'm going to start doing paces. So my pace, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine paces. Nine of my paces, and I was going 24 miles an hour. I'm not going to do a leaderboard because obviously some bikes can't get to 24 miles an hour. But it just gives you a bit of an idea. So not bad really, of course the issue with mechanical brakes is that they're good as long as you can grip the levers pretty hard. Hydraulic on the other hand barely need any strength to get maximum braking force. Another aspect of a good braking distance is the tyres. The tyres, being 2.1 inch thick, thick enough to go over a variety of terrain, but also not too thick that if you do want to power the bike yourself, it doesn't feel like you've got, you're have got you stuck to the road, but you do feel like you've got a decent amount of grip, which is nice. So it's super fast, has okay brakes, decent tyres, it also has good front suspension which is lockable with adjustable preload. Basically the amount of suspension travel. Have I got the suspension on right now? I have. It's actually alright, it's quite comfortable. I think what I like about it is it's not too squishy. It also looks very smart, it does look like a standard mountain bike, but a nice looking one. The saddle is also very comfortable and sprung to help mitigate the lack of rear suspension. The stand is sturdy, the pedals are solid and it has a buzzer. So where have they saved the money because the specs of the bike are better than some bikes costing twice as much? Well, they have used Shimano's bottom of the range gears, Tawny, but they're using so many e-bikes and as I always say, if they are well adjusted, then they're absolutely fine. Sometimes it can just take a little while to pop into the exact gear that you want. I did notice that the derailleur says six speed on it when it's meant to be seven, but it doesn't seem like it makes the gears any worse than Tawny gears on the other bikes I've ridden. The 750 watt 48 volt hub motor is a no-name motor but it does seem to pull extremely well unlike some of the other no-name motors I've ridden. What is that? What is that? There's only a front light but it's bright enough although it does give off a fairly narrow beam of light. Because I didn't have a backlight luckily I had my base camp boards helmet that has a built-in backlight and it's a really nice looking helmet. Links for that are in the description. The lights are turned on and off by a button on the handlebars. Now when I was riding earlier the, the front mudguard was flapping about because they're really flappy mudguards but uh, it seems alright at the moment, I've kind of moved it out of the way because it might need a bit of bending to get in the right position so it doesn't hit the other part of the bike of course, unlike a lot of e-bikes, it doesn't seem to have been designed from the ground up as an e-bike. It seems to have first been designed as a standard mountain bike. It is like they've taken a normal mountain bike frame and then just kind of strapped things to it. So you've got the external battery down here, you've got an external controller at the bottom. It does seem well packed though, so and it does have a waterproof rating or water resistant rating. That doesn't seem to be a problem. They've got the computer, which is an LCD screen, which is fine. It's actually got quite a few different settings on. It's got your Odo, it's got your trip. It's just LCD, it's not LED or anything like that. It is very simple. Let's get down here. Yeah, that, that suspension works well. But they, they seem to have used some really powerful components on it, especially the motor, 750 watt. I don't know what the time is yet for um, Sandy Lane, but I wouldn't be surprised if it beat the Engine Pro, for instance. But despite the non dispokeness of the frame, I do kind of like it. It's like someone mad maxed a bike and then gave it a nice paint job. And the great thing about having an easily accessible battery, unlike, say, a folding e bike, is that it's so fast just to whip off the battery when leaving the bike or when you want to charge it without having to carry the bike somewhere. Having said that, though, it's not a heavy bike at 28 kilograms and it can take a weight of 130 kilograms. And Gunai, it's not a brand many people have heard of, and you do pay extra for brand recognition. I suppose being a brand that not many people have heard of, there's going to be a lot of people who, you know, they like to spend a lot of money 
on their expensive stuff and they're going to come into the comments and say oh that's a load of rubbish Chinese made it's gonna break but it isn't rubbish I really like this bike I like the 21 gears I remember watching a video where someone said an e-bike doesn't need any gears and maybe they don't need gears but they do definitely help if it wasn't for the gears this bike wouldn't be able to push past 28 miles per hour and it wouldn't be able to get up really really steep hills I do love the massive 48 volt 15 amp hour battery that gives a capacity of 720 watt hours I rode over 20 miles on the bike and it still had three bars left the bike also didn't show any signs of decreased performance. At the rate I was going, the bike should have easily been able to reach a 40 mile range, which is impressive considering I was mainly using throttle, riding over bumpy terrain and all with a 100 kilogram rider. The fact that it is a mountain bike with electric bits strapped to it also means that if anything breaks, it should be extremely easy to replace it. Also, the battery is a common slide-on type, meaning you could easily purchase new batteries and double or even triple your range. Just don't buy a dodgy battery that's going to catch fire. Being a mountain bike, I thought it only right to take it a bit more off-road than usual. The bike coped well on a range of surfaces, which is more that can be said for me. Ah. Oh, this is cool. Ah. Nettles, nettles. Ah, I got me. Flat me up. <laughs> Flat me up. I just get a bit narrow. Where am I? Right, I don't remember. Oh, crossing the motorway. Oh, that's kind of scary. Whoa, that's a hell of a lot of solar panels. Bloody hell. Wow. Oh, no. Which way am I going? Is it the same? Oh, okay, not that way, that's a field. I have uh, got no idea where I'm going. Surely this is not the walk I was meant to be on. Oh God, sorry camera. I suppose being on this kind of bike, it makes sense to choose this kind of path. I wish I knew where I was going though. Where am I? I am going to go right. Don't know why, but I am. Wow, I'm here. Bloody hell. And this isn't the way I was meant to have gone. Bring my camera in a bit. <laughs> Jesus. Stop saying Jesus. Right. I was here yesterday. I know where I am. All right. Just casually fishing under the M54. <laughs> Don't go too fast to get told off. Let me know in the comments. Am I going too fast? I used to go fishing in the canal. I caught a whale once. Had spokes and everything. After a few wrong turns, I suddenly appeared back home, wondering how I'd missed so many turnoffs that would have made the route so much simpler and a lot less stingy. Despite the nettle stings, I was happy that I found a bike that actually impressed me. It has got some really good features. It seems well made. The range is excellent. And did I mention it is fast? So done the brakes. Than the speed. I've, I've got to 33, but I might well have gone up being able to get past that. I'm very impressed. Let's see if we can catch a car. Obviously, a car brake has got better brakes than this bike, so don't get too close to cars. But we're keeping up. 
I really didn't think the bike would be as good as it was and I actually forgot how much it cost. After I'd ridden the bike I visited the website again to check out the specs and I was honestly pretty shocked that the bike cost less than 800 euros. So here end of the review and as I said earlier we do have links to the bike in the description if you're interested. It would help a lot if you use them but it won't cost you anything and it will also encourage Gunai to send more of their bikes over for us to review for you. I also asked if they have a discount code so check the description or the pinned comment for that just in case they do end up give me one you have been watching the evrc and that was the gunai gn29 a very quick mountain bike style e-bike if you think you like the look of the bike i'd love it if you used our affiliate links in the description especially if you got something from the video and it helped you a little bit but of course if you've got any questions do ask in the comments i'll do my best to answer them and maybe there's other people out there who've also had experience with this bike you can also chime in too and because i forgot to say it actually on the bike thank you so much for watching until the end and until next time ride safe oh, yeah. i got stung ah oh, that hurts need a dock leaf